AI has been an important way we approach our mission. In 2001, we were using a simple version of machine learning to suggest better spellings on search. And by 2011, deep learning techniques were helping pave the way for things like better speech recognition and more accurate maps. A decade later, AI powers so many of the products people use every day, from search and translate to searchable photo albums. It's both exhilarating as well as terrifying That's to for people. Sure. I think people should be happy that we're a little bit scared of this. I think people should be You're happy. a little bit scared. A little bit, yeah, You of personally. Course. I think if I said I were not, you should either not trust me or be very unhappy I'm in this job. We are now entering a brave new chapter with technology. Artificial intelligence seems to be the new frontier where billions will be invested. New kings of the tech space will be born and giants will be slayed. Similar to the internet age that ushered in a new age tech giants. This too will define our future not just today but for generations. Google, probably the most impactful tech company over the last 20 years, is finally realizing that they have a lot of work to do. OpenAI's large language models, which has been marketed as ChatGPT, GPT-4 and etc., is showing the world that the artificial intelligence systems are coming sooner than we had initially expected, and the ramifications across different sectors of society is going to be huge. Jobs will change. Medicinal discoveries will be different. The archaic education system will probably look a lot different within a few decades than it is today and over the last 100 years. How will we adapt will be another question. But for now let's focus on the battle that is going to be played out with our different tech giants. Google was poised to be the company that will push us into this brave new world. AI systems for the most part especially language models needs data, computing power and world-leading expertise. Google seems to tick the box on all those metrics and quite convincingly. If we are focusing on data especially textual information, they are the largest search engine, and practically the world's largest information harvesting machine. They can collect information from practically any website on the planet. As for computing power, they have some of the largest computing infrastructures on the planet to a degree that they have given researchers the chance to experiment with AI systems for free up to a certain degree through Google Colab. Lastly as for expertise, they do have some of the best engineers in the world working for them. They are also pretty impactful in the AI space as well. They have created an ecosystem that has supported computer scientists, engineers and business leaders who would like to venture into this space and capitalize on the opportunities. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the infamous founders of Google, often states that Google will be an AI company. OpenAI, on the other hand, is a relatively new company that was conjured up by Elon Musk and other important persons in tech as a way to democratize AI. Elon later left the company under suspicious circumstances and has been a critic of it ever since. The premise at the time was that AI was such a powerful tool that if it was only controlled by a few at the top, they could monopolize the market and open a new can of worms in various scenarios. OpenAI was made to counterbalance that. In hindsight, whether they have achieved that goal is another story due to the capitalist's nature they have taken over the last few years, and even more so lately, with the recent funding from Microsoft, which puts the valuation of the company in the tens of billions. According to Corporate Finance Institute, the law of large numbers states that as a company grows, Growth in revenues, for example, becomes unsustainable. But let's change the definition a bit and use the law of large numbers as a means to describe innovation, which will suit this next argument. Basically, the larger a company gets is the harder it is for the company to innovate due to the fact that decisions that should have taken days to make has to go through a systemized process, which is now taking a few weeks which slows down the system of innovation unnecessarily. This has been a problem for Google, and we have seen that recently, with the possible introduction of BARD and POMI, which is supposed to be a large language model to counter chat, which is the largest rising application in history thus far, with over 100 million signups in a few months. Very impressive for just a question and answering prompt engine. Google is still yet to release BARD, and this reticence might cost them. We are seeing that Facebook is entering this space massively as well, with their recent release of Llama, which is another powerful language model. It is to be noted that Facebook does have an AI backbone of their own, albeit not as structured and influential as Google, 
but that might change as the company is looking for a win to show investors given their mishaps in the social media space. So as you can see due to the law of large numbers, Google is now seen as a slow but still powerful company. But the smaller upstarts are challenging them in the AI space. The reason why I am expecting Google's executive to be nervous is because ChatGPT will change the way how search works. Instead of spending hours searching for a reliable information on certain topics, this system can give it to you within seconds, which will save hours of a researcher's life. If the researcher feels a bit lazy like we always do, ChatGPT could even write the entire essay, and the researcher in the process doesn't even have to visit a single website that is bloated and filled with various pop-up ads. This can allow ChatGPT to do absolutely everything. ChatGPT is being used to solve problems right across the board, and it's only the beginning. This eats into the heart of Google's business that still relies heavily on ad revenue. If and when these bots becomes mainstream, ChatGPT will eat into search because we don't have to search anymore, or if we do, it would not be to the previous extent. The less time we spend on Google the less likely we are going to find a chance to click on an ad, and that is the killer right there. Let's assume that the average user time on Google dropped by 10 to 20 percent, I am positive that will have an impact on revenue unless ad targeting improves at the same rate. Another factor that needs to be taken into consideration is the fact even if Google develops a model similar to ChatGPT and implement it, how will that work out revenue-wise? They are basically cannibalizing a part of their business by doing that. They are caught in a unique spot where there are no easy answers. When Microsoft made the announcement that they are entering the AI race by investing $1 billion into OpenAI, it was a wake-up call to Google that they might need to pay attention to language models, more as this is going to bring a lot of innovations with it. Microsoft made a strategic investment that will see the technology being used right across the Microsoft ecosystem, especially for Bing which is way behind Google in search engines market share. What Microsoft is probably betting on is to use this technology in Bing so that users can flock to the search engine to take advantage of all the suite of features that comes with it. We are in the very early stages of another innovation cycle, which is similar to the 1990s, when the internet was used by only researchers and computer enthusiasts, along with software engineers. The stakes are high for both sides. Google's search engine model might finally face some competition, and companies in the ranks of OpenAI will be trying their best to change the narrative. Despite big tech having the advantage with resources of all sorts, the swarm intelligence of the community of software engineers, hackers and computer scientists, developing independent research and creating novel programs, should not be underestimated.